Hello everyone, it's Dawn McPhee here from Dawn's Inspirations. I wanted to just do a quick tutorial on how to make this lovely surprise. I call it like a sandwich box because it reminds this is where sort of the idea comes from, is like a sandwich that goes in half. Okay, and you have your little tray in the middle that can be for gifts, sweets, treats, whatever you wish really. So I made this on Create and Craft TV and I used this lovely cardstock which absolutely blows your mind because the colours just change. Well this is going to play havoc with my camera. So I'm going to make it for you today just out of some Pink Frog Super Smooth because we love our Super Smooth. So I've got two sheets of A3 card okay if you haven't already subscribed to my youtube pack channel just press the subscribe button then you won't miss out on anything that i'm doing craft wise so i've got my i've got the long side at the top and we're going to do the same on two two of the cards okay so you're going to score at 19 and a half centimeters all the way down and 22 and a half centimeters all the way down then you're going to do a quarter turn so the short side is at the top and you're going to score at three centimeters all the way down well obviously you're not going to reach my scoreboard doesn't go that long so i just do a flip and score again at three okay my three there doesn't look particularly straight what is going on let's just check that so that's three and let me just check that's three there we go that's three and i'm going to do that on two so let me do the same again with you so we've got 19 and a half on the long side and 22 and a half on the long side okay and then three on the short side so as like any construction make sure your measurements your butting up everything is key because it is so so important otherwise the construction doesn't work and then what you're going to then do is you're going to do a score line um, you're going to do a score line from the corner out if you like so I'm going to measure this bit again to 22 and a half so back in on the longer side 22 and a half in fact what I'm going to do is I'm going to score it in half I'm going to put it up there and I just want to make a little mark at 22 and a half so I've just got a little mark I could have done it with my pencil I've done it with my bone folder uh, on my embossing tool and I'm going to do exactly the same on here making sure that's all straight and just going to do a 22 and a half on there and if I bring my other one in I can do exactly the same on there So this is with where we had the three centimetre only. You're going to come up to 22 and a half and just do a little mark. And then if you do it the same again on the other little piece of your fold like that. OK, that gives that line. And actually, I'm going to let me just score that down. That make life a lot easier because I want you to cut this, but we're only cutting to this line here, if you like. So I could put it in my trimmer, but I think I'll cut it by hand. So actually, if I go 22 and a half and 22 and a half. And then I can just cut that with a pair of scissors. I could put it in my trimmer, but I don't want to cut this piece here in the middle. So 22 and a half, 22 and a half. Okay, so to recap, 
on your long side on both you've got 19 and a half and 22 and a half all the way down on your short side you've got three and twenty two and a half all the way down and then we're going to cut away so let me share with you let's cut this away first before I do the diagonal folds and the diagonal folds are the bit that makes your um, like your sandwich box so so take that away so I'm just cutting on the score line. I could have put it in my trimmer, but this part is going to be folded in, so you're not going to see it. So I find personally, you're fine cutting it. All right. Just make sure that's cut. So when you're cutting these, make sure you're cutting it actually on the score line. And then with this at the bottom here, you're going to cut straight on the score line on the two outer pieces and then you're going to do your burnish on those two pieces okay and you're going to do that exactly the same on both so I'm just going to leave that on in front of the camera for a minute so you can actually see what I have done so you can see at the bottom that straight but then you've got that sort of that tapered wedge that we use when we do boxes. All right. So that is what I want you to, to have. And you're going to do that on both. And it does, you know, it looks a bit strange, but all will come clear, as you will see. It took me a little while to work the dimensions and the um, size of the box out because I wanted to make it optimum size to get as much in as possible. You know, if you're if someone that makes homemade sweets or anything, this is perfect for that. Um, so, yes, feel free to make away if you've made them. And it would be nice if you could just sort of mention where you got the measurements from and the idea type thing. It would be lovely. So, I've got two now. So, the next thing I'm going to do is to get my embossing tool and my ruler and you're going to do a score line from there to there now I could put it in my trimmer I could put it on my scoreboard but it's just as easy to do it like this so just press hard I'm on a glass mat I could have put it on a, a rubber mat would have made life just a little bit easier because then this is going to come over so this is giving like a a double wall to that sandwich bit this is making this more substantial all right and you're going to do the same on all four of these okay so just take your time okay now you can see how hard it is to see on the white if you'd have seen me trying to do it on the mirror, I don't think you'd be seeing what I'm doing because your eyes would be going ag agar-agar, -ag which you don't want. So that is then what you're going to have in it look like. So let me just repeat that because we need that on two because this, this box is a box of two halves, as they say. So... That's one fold that over it's right I nearly drop my embossing tool then that would be a nightmare on my craft room floor and then again on this side now there we go straight and then fold over now when you're folding this over, this is where you need to be very precise with how your measuring goes. Okay, because this is going to give us our double walled effect. So at this stage now, I'm going to go in and burnish all my score lines. And this is where I want you to watch because this is 
how if you haven't quite got those score lines right and I can see mine even might need a little bit of what I call an angel's hair off we can rectify it very easily you don't have to think oh I've got to start all over again and throw that beautiful card away no you do not I'm going to show you a cheats way to help you out doesn't always happen in projects that I do with construction but um, if there's a way I will share you know I will so let's just have that across there and then just burnish these I know I did fold them to make that little mark but I'm just going to burnish before we glue so you're going to fold these over to glue all right now you could fold it over and trim first but sometimes you can trim too much off so this is where I'm going to show you a cheats way so go in with your glue if you're using specialized cards like the mirror card or glitter card I would highly recommend you use double-sided tape okay but as I'm just using super smooth I can go in just with my EVA so you're going to burnish that down this is then giving I'm using 300 GSM super smooth so this is making this wall now 600 GSM so this is making this nice and sturdy this is what we want okay this is how your box is going to be used again and again and I'm sure even when you gift give it it will be recycled or upcycled as I like to say and passed on again to somebody else from the recipient that you sent it to or they will keep it to store nice things in them this is this is what I love about creating boxes and, and boxes that stand out from other people's boxes or shop bought boxes you know to buy a shop bought box like this well to tell you the truth I've never seen anywhere that sells a, a shop bought box like this but if they did or if they do yours is going to be better because you've handmade it and if you're in if you're someone that is into making their homemade confectionery this is lovely for storing or sh you know showcasing your chocolates or fudge and also this is very good you know if you're not into candy you can put anything in it a nice silk scarf you could even put some shop bought chocolates in it because at the end of the day you can make something that's you know you could go and buy something that isn't too expensive and put in a fabulous box like this and the person will think wow you've spent a lot of money on that right before we do the next bit i'm just going to wipe my nib and this is where i'm going to show you the cheats way okay now let's bring the one in that's dried a little bit first so when I fold this over can you see you've got that little edge this box is not going to fold up if you've got that little angels what I call an angels hair you need to trim that away and this is where sometimes it's better to actually trim it away when you stuck it rather than trying to cut pieces off your card before you stick it down so take that little piece away because that is the difference you're going to have with your box sitting correctly fold the other side and just make sure that doesn't happen see it hasn't happened on that side so now both of those are nice and neat do the same on the bottom as well there that's just a tiny little wedge on one end okay so just take your time because this is the difference between your box closing nicely and looking good or not that side is absolutely fine yeah that one's done see you only need those couple of little bits uh, that are the difference with your box sitting nicely or not okay so this is why at this stage I would do them 
sometimes you do it and you don't have any issues at all as you would have seen me on live television they sat absolutely beautifully that one does let's just check these middle ones that one just needs a little piece off so don't think oh it doesn't fold up right throw that in the bin you don't need to just double check your lines so that is all I've taken off just those tiny little pieces so now let's get this together so we want our box to look nice I always like to start with a plain piece in first normally I don't say that but I want a plain piece in first so just fold that over and make sure you've got that nice crisp score line okay check that one so that's going to go in first then you're going to do your tag because that then is going to go in the middle and then we're going to go with the outside piece which again is going to be nice and straight so that's your inside so this means then when you're putting your box together it all looks nice and neat and professional so you're going to start off with that piece with your tab and then you're going to fold this piece over the top so get your glue all on ready and you're going to fold that over like that and this is where you just check it's all nice and square go in with your bone folder if you need Okay, I'm just going to trim that piece off there. There we go. So that's the first one done. Nice and neat edges. And we're going to do exactly the same for the second one. So we just fold these up. And just give those another burnish so we know they're nice crisp lines. Those crisp lines make all the difference. If you don't have a nice Teflon bone folder, pop it on your Christmas list. You know, it's a brilliant tool. You'll find you're not pressing as hard to burnish because it's got that weight behind it. It's not heavy, but it's just got a different weight behind it. Um, and they do make a big difference. Okay, so this time I'm, I'm gluing on the opposite side, but it doesn't make any difference. It still all works. So that piece then goes on the outside like that. Fold that over again. Make sure your corners are nice and neat and together. Put it on your desk. Go in with your bone folder. I'm just going to trim that little piece off. I don't like the look of that. So there we go, straight away we've got our two halves. Okay, these are your two halves to make your square. All right. Now, you could say, okay, you're just going to join that on the outside. That doesn't look very professional, does it? So we're going to glue it on the inside, but we're going to glue both on the inside. So you're going to go down on that... Um, score line and you're going to do halfway down that way so I've gone top to bottom and then on this way you're going to go bottom to top and then you're going to thread put them back on themselves like that and you're going to thread one over the other so it's looking like that okay this is then going to give that nice neat finish on the outside. The next thing you're going to do is glue and stick down on the inside. So just take, just, excuse me a minute, we're just going to take that in, glue that down on the inside, go in with your bone folder, get that glue dispersed. You're going to do exactly the same on this one. glue down let me just turn it around this way so I can see what I'm doing again bone folder 
stick that down so straight away there is your box mate okay that's as easy as it is doesn't it look fabulous so now you need your tray to fit inside your box so let me uh, take all that off there put my nib back in there so now let's do our tray I've got a tray I've already pre-cut here that has some glitter actually so I'm hoping this doesn't play havoc with the camera so this piece of glitter let's turn it over that way this piece of well I've got a glitter card here but you can use anything whatever colour combination you're going this is 25 centimetres by 25 centimetres you're then going to score in three centimetres on all four sides and do your mitres to create your box so let's just take this off here might as well take them all off in one hit that's it so this is just a normal box base or lid whatever you want to call it you do so and then you're going to fold those up but again folding them up so you've got that nice line because having it all nice and square ooh, stuck to my desk with my red line tape having it all nice and square is key Okay, so popping that in there and then popping that one in there so that's your box tray if you like and then this will fit quite nicely inside your box okay and that is as easy as that is to put together all right so we can open that up to reveal your tray okay but it fits nice and neat inside here you've got your nice double walled edge so you've got that nice mechanism and if i bring in my finished one a bit sparkly i do apologize to finish off the decoration I've actually put some red line double sided tape with some ribbon so I've started this end and I've put it all the way around and then you remember that hinge at the back there that covers that which you don't actually see any pieces sticking out but it just gives that reinforcement and then obviously you can tie it into a nice bow when it's all together and that pulls it then tight so it sits nice and tightly together okay so that's how i did the bow mats and layers again personal choice so i have done mats and layers on mine and the way i did it and i will give you the measurements because i know you're all going to ask if i turn it over on the planer side so i've done an outside mat so i did myself two squares and the squares for the lower mat were measuring um, 18 centimeters by 18 centimeters then you just literally cut corner to corner diagonal and that is your outside mat that's as easy as that is and then the next layer up I have cut um, 16 by 16 and again you do that diagonal cut across and then that sits neatly to give you your mats and layers and that's as easy as it is to do your mats and layers for that size box so they're the size mats and layers you're going to need for the size box we've constructed I show, told you how to put the ribbon on and then I just die cut myself a couple of little bows to go on there my tissue's all sticking out I push that down cut myself a couple of little bows to go on there 
and a nice little gift tag but a really quick easy box to do it you know this can be made in any color you desire the choice is yours but it's one of those boxes that you're going to come back to time and time again it fits nice and snug if it was flapping about it wouldn't look nice so it does fit a little bit snug so just watch your scoring watch your measurements do your burnishing and you too will be able to create beautiful gift boxes just like this i'm dawn mcfee from dawn's inspirations thank you for watching and see you soon bye for now